Today on Drawbly, Ben is leveling up his portrait drawing. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Abby. And we are self-taught artists documenting our drawing adventures because art is better with friends. So click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And don't forget to check out our guidebook on daily drawing linked below. Ben, I have seen the finished result of this one. Spoilers. And it is so good. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I, I like this one. This is one of my better ones recently. And I actually like the way it looks right now too. I'm trying to pay very close attention because the way you render your skin and your value shifts it is always so like it comes out so clean which is so interesting to me because it can look like you know very all over the place at first although this still looks very cohesive yeah it's just um, rough you know that kind of alla prima style or allo primo mm -hmm. as some like to say um yeah, you know, just working rough in the beginning. I don't think there's any reason to refine early on. You're just trying to nail down the landmarks and create a cool style. I've never properly um, adjusted or started using that style of like doing a layer, painting in shadow that's like block red and really strong and then fading the opacity on that. And that's still something you incorporate very successfully in your work that I'm very jealous of because I just never remember or think to do it. Yeah, um, I, you know, it's just like a really natural way to work, I think. Uh, I think it just makes sense. You're like, oh, here's a shadow being cast on the face. Let me just draw that shape on the face and then either use like a multiply layer or something like that. Um, it's a very, I think, a very popular way to work because of how easy it is to use that other layer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Would well, recommend. Yeah. One thing I really like about this piece is that you have a really clear delineation from darkness to light, and you keep that really clear and sharp. I kind of struggle to keep that kind of thing sharp and interesting. Um, I tend to over blur that out. Whereas you have kept it very sharp. And if I recall correctly, you go back and add like a deep saturation line between the light and the shadow for a very like interesting artistic element. Yeah, that is something that does uh, scientifically happen between lights and shadows on skin. Uh, however, it is often exaggerated in paintings by yeah. many artists. Uh, one that comes to mind, uh, Sam Desart, Ross Drawls, mm -hmm. uh, Can Liu, uh, three that come to mind, I guess. Uh, they all do that. Uh, a lot of artists do that uh, because it creates a really nice uh, stylistic charm. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I have done for quite a while now to varying degrees of success. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and something I've gotten better at lately. The hand looks good too. I feel like your form on the hand with its dimensions reads really well. Hands are so hard to get still. There's no like, I feel like there's not a tipping point where I'm just like, oh yeah, let me just bust out a hand. Like that's easy. It's always something that requires a lot of thought and precision. Yeah, hands take me quite a long time and they still end up looking very boxy, just like this one <laughs> does mm. at the end. Uh, looking back at it, I would have probably just erased the hand and left it out entirely if I could go back. If I could turn really? back time. No, yeah. the hand's good. Yeah, well, compared to the face at the end, you'll you'll kind of see and get a vibe of how it looks. But, but maybe it's one of those things where like you leave the hand kind of like unrefined and unfinished. In some ways. Because it's not a focal point. In some ways it does kind of have that element, which is why I was like, oh, it's not really worth me taking the time to repaint over top of this, mm -hmm. especially since it's all like pretty much one layer here. Yeah, so. no, this looks good. Your eyes look excellent. Like you are doing such an incredible job of capturing like dimensions here. And I love that. I'm not anywhere near as good at that. Um, so that's really cool to see. Yeah, I'm at the point now where my base is finished and now I'm going over top and uh, you know, kind of refining what I already have. So this is uh, all the hard round brush up to this point. I don't think I've used anything else, but I do use other brushes uh, eventually mm, to uh, create mm -hmm. some more texture mm -hmm. and more visual interest in a few different areas. Cool. One, at one point when you showed this to me while you were working on it, you have the eyes really, I think, saturated here. But at one point you showed them to me and it was like all very desaturated, both the eyelashes and the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, which at first I was like, oh, Ben, you 
maybe you want to darken the eyelashes but then i thought about it for two seconds and talked to you about it and i was like actually though it reminds me of this one artist we looked at during our artist adventures i, I can't remember their name i'll pull up their art here and i'm doing the effect right now yeah actually. where they keep the eyes like super like not the focal point which is crazy for portraits but they have a lot of like beautiful detailed armor mm -hmm. and other details and the effect is incredible so i love that you went for that with this um yeah, did you end a... up keeping it like that yeah yeah you'll see i actually i think make it even stronger <laughs> um but desat yeah they're not desaturated they're just like faded out with the natural skin tone of mm. the surrounding area uh, the word that comes to mind is like milky. It kind of like gives it a milky effect is the only thing that I can think of to describe it. But it helps, you know, the eyes are such a strong focal point that I think downplaying them sometimes can be an interesting effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, not, it can Not be. that like anything else would be the focal point on this character, but it's like still the focal point but like less contrasty. Yeah, and I like that effect a lot. It's really cool. It's different. Maybe it's the new art wave now. Is it's the new. It's the new. I'm setting trends eyes. that other artists already set that I, <laughs> that I stole. <laughs> That's how art is, though. You know, we just build slightly on the work set. I'm the one us. who. Yeah, I, I, I was the first one to do it. Trust me. No, trust me. not at all. <laughs> so I'm using one of my own custom brushes. There. Oh yeah, is this that pencil brush? Uh, it is. I use my, I think it's called Hex. Uh, all of the custom brushes that I'm working on are part of my spell book. <laughs> so they all have like different spell names. I love that so much. That's so cool. So this one is Hex. That's so fun. That reminds me of how eyeshadow palettes are named. Oh, that's true. Yeah. A lot of, well, and they're not all just spell books, but they're always like a theme. Yeah. But I like the idea of it with brushes actually a lot more because I like the way you're like, it's a spell book and each one is like a different spell cast from my magic wand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You get it. You understand. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing, uh, creating quite a few different brushes that like I, I normally don't use. I think I've gone like the past two years of Drawbly just saying, I'm just going to use the hard round brush and get good with that. Like, yeah. But now I'm finally experimenting with different brushes and playing around a little more. But for the most part, I still use the hard round brush. <laughs> I have to say, I love how you've taken the blue in her eyes and incorporated that or had incorporated that into her shadows on her body. Yeah, just some and her hair. bluer shadows to contrast. Yeah, I think that goes so well together. What's this? That is me adding a little texture to the background. Oh. I, one, I wanted to try a white background or just a like more light background. Yeah. I didn't like it. So I went to uh, fade that out and left like, you know, just a little bit of it in for texture. This is so thoughtful. I feel like everything you're doing is like, I know what I want to do. Yeah. And I'm going to do that thing. I feel like for me, it's, it's so much more of, I just want to capture this tiny piece of light here and that's different there but you seem to have a much more like large cohesive idea and notion of where you want your piece to end up and how it should feel and look and i think that's so cool to be able to have that vision well it's more because i would say you have the same thing but more for like full body sketches mm. full body drawing i've painted i think a lot more portraits than you uh, I think that's been a lot more of my focus on draw bleed. I would agree. I, I think when it comes to drawing versus painting, you have done more painting in general than I have digitally or really, I haven't done that much IRL painting mm -hmm. at all. Um, so at this point, yeah, you've done a lot more painting than I have. I keep going back to drawing and drawing and drawing. And I need to keep going back to drawing well, and drawing I need to keep drawing. painting. We'll have to go on a strict diet of, um, you do the drawing and I'll paint it or something. That sounds like a terrible diet. It does. Be so sad. I would actually be sad too. Like... I love drawing. You love painting. <laughs> <laughs> he loves sweets. She loves vegetables. Uh. <laughs> Can they swap? No. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Look at all your detail you're taking into the hand here. I uh, The hand ends up not great, but I'm really happy with the overall painting. Yeah. So 
I'm okay with the hand not being so great. I should take like literally three months and draw nothing but hands, which yeah. again would be a terrible diet, but it would be a helpful diet. I've I've done some hand days where I've just studied hands and no, done hands. One and... day is not enough for, for old Benny boy. He needs a lot of help with mm -hmm. hands. <laughs> But there's my finished portrait. This like I said, so awesome. one of my better ones uh, from recent memory. Yeah, she looks so good. I really, really like this one. And you should be very proud because this is just the, the doorstep towards many, many great paintings to come. I can feel it. And if you want to be a doorstep, click that like oh and subscribe gosh. button and check out our guidebook, How to Easily Draw Every Day, at the link below in the description. Share your work on Instagram with hashtag Drawbly because drawing is better with friends. And this is the part where we say goodbye. Goomba. What does it mean to be a doorstep? It's not usually a good connotation. Oh, so I shouldn't have said... No! <laughs> oh, oh, or a doormat. You know what? Maybe I'm thinking of doormat. Yeah, you know? doorstep is inviting. You know, yeah. that's, that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. No, you, our viewers don't want to be doormats, but they want to be on their next step to the next best thing.